Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. Today is Mompreneur Monday. Very exciting. <laughs> and on Mompreneur Monday, we always talk to moms who are making it happen despite all the craziness going on and everything happening in the world. So today I have Jen Lafort, who's on here. Uh, very, very excited to have her on. And I'm going to let her tell a lot of her story. I don't want to take that from her, but she's got a lot of um, things that she's dealing with right now. And I think it'll help a lot of you out there, um, especially the moms and dads who maybe don't have kids in school or are they're just getting back to school and trying to get back into their routine. Uh, so very excited for that. Um, first of all, I want to mention, as you can see, bah, 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 I'm wearing the shirt. Uh, Rank Makers Live, a, vir a virtual experience is coming up uh, in just, oh my gosh, what is it, like two, three weeks, October 8th through 10th. And this is not just a regular virtual experience. It's not like a Zoom where you're just sitting there for eight hours in a room mm -hmm. and wondering, you know, when can I get up and just bashing your head against the wall because you're on a computer for eight hours. Right. We are not going to do that to you, I promise. This is run by the same team that ran Tony Robbins' UPW virtual experience. We're making it so interactive, so fun. Uh, a lot of you will be receiving a fun package in the mail to uh, to feel like you're there with us and the aesthetics and what we're doing to engage you to make sure that you learn and apply are just incredible. I'm excited because it's our first ever virtual event that we've done like this as many people have. So uh, if that interests you, you can go to rankmakerslive.com and get your ticket. We have some special giveaways and things happening this week. So make sure that you do that. And, uh, and it's going to be awesome. It's going to be amazing. So one of the things that we're training on Rank Makers Live is obviously social media sales and, and how to do that. And I know that Jen um, is, is really mastering that and has two babies at home. So Jen and also is an actress, right? You're an actress? Yes. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So I'd love to hear about that as well. But um, share with... Uh, the moms and dads out there a little bit about your story and what you have going on right now. Sure. Well, thanks so much for that nice introduction, Jess. So yeah, um, I'm a mom of two. I have a six-year-old and I have a three and a half-year-old. I live in the city of Chicago in the city. And um, I have been an independent business owner for probably the past six years. And it's funny, before I came into my business, I was an actress. And I was an actor for a long time and I absolutely loved it. It was my passion. I did a lot of theater, a lot of film, mm -hmm. um, a little bit of TV. And I even had a national commercial for Five Hour Energy running a few years ago. Nice. And thanks. Yeah. And I loved acting. It was my passion. But I noticed a little bit of a shift in me that I wanted to do something more. I wanted to branch out and take a stab at something in the business world but I didn't quite know what I wanted to do. And I knew that I loved entrepreneurship and I loved being my own boss and doing my own thing. And what I didn't realize was that I was already doing that by being an actor. I was already running my own business, the business of Jen Lafort, and you know, going to auditions and networking and meeting with people and marketing. And so I was looking for something that was gonna help me make more money because unfortunately as an actor you don't you don't make a lot of money and you don't know when your next gig is going to come and you're always waiting and wondering and i wanted to have more stability so i just fell into my business literally it was something i was never looking for i signed up with a stranger that i met online i never knew her and i started building my business before i had kids when i had all the time in the world <laughs> and then um you know, I had kids and I had to pivot and I had to figure out how I was going to continue to build my business in the new reality of mod because I knew for me that, you know, going back to corporate America was not going to be the answer because I was going to start at the bottom. I was going to make nothing and I was going to work 60 plus hours a week because I want to be viewed as a good employee. And I also looked at the amount of daycare especially here in the city of Chicago, mm. my whole entire paycheck would go to daycare. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 
So um, I, you know, discovered my business and I really became a student of the business. And I realized that if I really wanted to make this work, I had to commit to it. And I had to find time that was going to work for me and around my growing family. <laughs> so a couple of things you mentioned there. One, you know, you wanted more control over your yeah. life, which I don't want people to miss that because people think that, you know, a job is control or, you know, you have a very stable acting career. How could that not be providing you what you need? But yeah. I think more so than ever, people are looking to have more control of their own future. So mm -hmm. why you got into that business is, is key. And also talk about the transition between having all the time, well, thinking you have all the time in the world and then having kids and what that transition was like for you in business. And lastly, I'd love to just know, I'm sure people are wondering, living in Chicago in the city, what is that like right now? Is it okay for a family? Is it not okay? And how are you dealing with that emotionally? Sure. So I think for me, when I had my kids, and I had my kids about two years apart, um, and so I had to do something that I kind of like to, that I dubbed now, as I call the nap time hustle. And what this is, is that when I had my second kid and I had two kids, um, I had to really, you know, pivot and think about how I was going to build this in the nooks and crannies of your my life. And at the time, you know, you don't quite know what that means. Um, but you really understand what that means when you have kids that you have to build this in the pockets of your day. And sometimes your day is going to change because you don't know if your kids going to have a good day or a bad day or they fall down or they get sick. So I always told myself, I always gave myself three things to accomplish um, every day. And I said, if I don't accomplish this, I'll move it over to the next day. But I always gave myself some grace too, because we as moms, especially, we're so hard on ourselves. We're our mm -hmm. biggest critic. And to then run a business and perform and be a good mom is a lot. So for me, when I had my second baby, um, especially with breastfeeding, I would I breastfed both my kids and it was a struggle to get there. But once we got into the groove, I realized that that was an ample time to build my business. You know, like a lot of people might think like, oh, I, well, that's your, your, your breastfeeding. You know, you shouldn't be, you, maybe you shouldn't be doing that. But after we kind of got into the groove, I realized that I had one hand free. Sorry, I'm coming over here so you can see in the camera. I had one hand free to be able to use my phone and text message customers, um, people who are interested in the business. And I also found that was a really great time to listen to personal development, trainings. And I just picked the pockets of my time to work my business. And the night before, I always told myself, all right, what are the three things that I want to accomplish today? personal and professional, and maybe something I want to do to celebrate the fact that I accomplished that. And I just made it very simple and always told myself, you know, the night before, hey, listen, if the kid gets 105 fever or gets sick or has a bad day, they come first. I will have to move this until the next day. But either way, I always told myself, get it done before the end of the week, which the end of the week is Sunday and the new week started on Monday for me. I, I love how simple that is because yeah. so many of us overcomplicate it. We put, we put these huge goals on our plate and then there you can't, you can't accomplish them. And then we beat ourselves up because mm -hmm. we didn't accomplish them. And then that makes us feel worse. And then we end up quitting because we didn't do the things that we said we would do. We were out of integrity with ourselves. It doesn't make us feel good. Right. And that's where people quit. And yeah. so just make it simple. I love that. Three things, work it into the pockets of your day. Yes. Very easy, very simple. And mm -hmm. I want to get into um, what an example of what some of those three things might be. Can you give us uh, three examples of something that you have on your list? Absolutely. You know, for me, I would always the night before sit down and like I said, think of three things that I want to do. And I always made one day about something, especially professionally and another day about something else. So let's take, for example, Monday. I would always say Monday is the day 
that I knew I had an hour and 15 minute window to get some work done. Also, you know, take care of myself, clean up, you know, put my hair back. And then as soon as that was done, I said, all right, I'm going to reach out to my customers today. I'm going to check in, see how they're doing, see how they're liking their products. Are they happy? Are they unhappy? And where can I be impactful? That was always one thing. And when I was done with that, I checked it off the list. And the personal thing was, for example, I said, all right, I'm going to fold that load of laundry that's been sitting in the dryer for two days. And when, as soon as I did that, and then when I would do that, I would listen to a training or I'd listen to some personal development. So at least I was accomplishing two things. And then the third thing was to do something for myself, to make sure I did something for myself to take care of myself. Because we all know if we're not ourselves at moms, we're going to be lousy moms. Mm -hmm. So for me, that was either indulging in that piece of chocolate that I wanted, or watching a little bit of some trashy TV, or, you know, doing something that made me feel somewhat normal again. And then for example, like the next day, I would say, okay, nap time hustle, I've got an hour and 15 minutes. I talked to my customers yesterday, let's reach out to some new people today. Let's spend 30 minutes, you know, looking around on Instagram or LinkedIn. I love LinkedIn. That's where I go and comment, like, get to know people, see where I can help people. And if I connect with three or four people in this 30 minutes, that is a win. And I just did that every day. And then for the next day, you know, I would connect with my team. And I mean, I just, I made it so simple and that's really how I built because I looked at it as like, you got to eat the elephant one bite at a time. And yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, yeah, the, I, absolutely amazing stuff. And so I think there's a lot of moms on here that can relate to that, mm -hmm. but they feel like I, you know, I, at least for me, when I first started my business, it was, I didn't know those were the things I had to do, right? Like I plugged into things like this mm -hmm. and, and that's where it came from. How did you, figure out that this is what you need to do to build your business? Did you just trust it on blind faith? I mean, what, what were some things that came into your path that, that helped with that? Well, I feel like for me, um, I had some really great coaches um, that came from the Higdon Group and the Inner Circle. I've been a member of the Inner Circle since 2017, and I continue to do coaching every year. I re-up it every year. I find it so invaluable. And it's nice to be able to have somebody to bounce it off of. And one of the things that I really got was having a DMO, having a daily DMO that you can do every day. And the daily DMO that was given was great. But I also realized, ooh, this may not be conducive to my lifestyle right now. So let's pick the three things that I know I can do. And if I have time, then I'll pick an extra one. And it'll make me feel good about myself. So I really got a lot of that from Ray and from you, Jess, from watching you and all of the incredible coaches of the IC who really helped me strategize and figure out what was important. Well, I appreciate that. I certainly, I didn't pay her to say those things. No, you didn't. But <laughs> she is not being paid for this interview. No, uh, so we we credit where that. credit is due, for sure. <laughs> well, yeah. thank you. Mm -hmm. And I, I have to agree that that accountability from something, someone, somebody in your life, whether that's from Hayden Group, Inner Circle, or event, or or someone that you know, you know, maybe you have someone in your team or a family member or a friend that you have that accountability with. It is huge when you're accountable to somebody that you respect or that is look you look up to and you know if you don't show up with these numbers, whether it's an upline or whoever, then mm -hmm. There, you're going to be given a talking to, or you're, yeah. you're going to say, up. Oh, well, mm -hmm. I guess, you know, we can't move forward until you have this. It just creates a new level of accountability for yourself until you develop those, those habits to go to the next level. Right. So right. I, right. I couldn't agree more. All right. So talk about, um, I have just a couple more questions for you. One is I, I don't live in a huge city never have. I don't know the stresses that come with that, especially now. And I can be, I could be totally clueless. So I don't know. I'm just asking the question because I think people like me are probably curious. Yeah. Is living in the city right now with a family, super stressful. 
And if it is, how do you navigate that? Or is it just fine? It's okay. Yeah. No, I mean, so I will say the great thing about Chicago is it's a city of neighborhoods all on top of each other. So um, I feel like it's a very different vibe in the city right now. I will say a lot of things are closed, which I know is so stressful on parents, especially outlets that we used to use to send our kids to and to have them go and play and run around. And, you know, and, and I don't mean to cut you off, but no, it's okay. You know, for me, I look at it, at it as I have a house, I have a little bit of a yard. I mean, we live in Florida, so not too much of a yard, but I have a little bit of a yard. Like I have space. And I think about people in the city right now that have kids mm -hmm. and, you know, if they're in what, it's probably a very nice apartment, but if they're in an apartment or in closed space and they can't even go and there's no grass for them to run, like, I'm just I'm wondering, just like what you said, I mean, those outlets, how, yeah. how do you handle that for somebody living in the city? Well, so I will say we take a lot of walks and we, you know, do go out to the parks. They are open. They do require masks, which is fine. The playgrounds just opened up about a month ago. And we were so grateful for that because, you know, our kids need a place to run around and play. I will say everybody in the city is wearing masks everywhere we go. It's mandatory. Um, and I, I feel a little bit of stress for my children because they just don't understand and they want to know when is this going to be over? When, when am I going to be able to go back to normal life? And on top of also running a business, I'm also um, a co-leader for my daughter's Daisy's Troop, which is uh, the younger version of Brownies. Aww. And one of the things that we said was that, you know, we really want to create some normalcy for these girls. Let's please get them back together you know, following the CDC guidelines that the Girl Scouts implemented and the city of Chicago, we can be together in a group of 15 or less, all wearing masks, six feet apart, you know, let's create some normalcy for them and do some activities outside, especially when it's nice, because it's going to turn cold in like two months, I might be coming to Florida, <laughs> especially with this virtual <laughs> learning, we could go anywhere. Um, but it's it's stressful because there's not a lot of things open, but it's not stressful because the weather right now is awesome. So everybody wants to be outside. But, you know, once November and December hits, it could be a whole different story of being, you know, staying at home, not going outside. So right now it's good. Um, I guess our numbers are OK, which is great. But, you know, our kids are probably not going to go back to school until January of next year. And that's something that I had to mentally prepare for and navigate this new world of being a mom, a teacher, and a business owner, and a CEO of a household, which I'm sure you can relate to as well, Jess. And how are you navigating that? I mean, the kids are home. How are they doing with that? What are some, some tips that you have for, you know, because I know when Sabrina was home for that extended period of time, mm -hmm. I felt... And, and I think all moms do, right? F felt an inner obligation to be present with her while oh. she's home. And, but I can't, cause I'm still working. I'm right. still, you know, helping run a business and still have other things going on. So mm -hmm. what what are some tips that you do to, to navigate that challenge and how is that working for your kids? Yeah, so I will say now that my daughter is on a schedule, you know, she's up on the Zoom right now, um, you know, learning. And so this time was perfect for me. And I am trying to teach her a little bit of independence that, you know, she can sit at the computer and do her work by herself. And when she's done, then we can have choice time or free time. And we can, you know, run around, play with Barbies. I have two girls, you know, do whatever you want to do. But we do have to remember that we also focus on work. And I also had to teach her a lot, especially during the beginning of the shutdown. You know, I had said to her, I'm like, listen, mommy's going to play with you right now. But when we're done, mommy needs about 30 minutes to go do some of her work. And you get to have choice time, free time, whatever you would like to do. And she liked that, but there were some times that she was like, no, mommy, please play with me. Please play with me. And at this point, I had been playing with her for like every hour of the day <laughs> as a mom being home during, you know, COVID. But what I taught her, I, I, I really feel like this time was amazing that I got to talk, talk, like teach her that mommy has to go do these things so then we can do the things that we love. 
meaning go get ice cream. We can go to Target and buy you, you know, off the clearance rack, that little dollar squishy that you want. And if mommy doesn't have this time, then we're not going to be able to do that. So this is a time for you to go do whatever you would like. And it's a time for mommy to work so then we can have those fun moments. And she really got that. And I, I'm lucky. I'm very lucky. Well, you know, just off that point, kids are so much smarter than we give them credit for. Oh they God. understand everything and uh, communication in life, whether it's with your kids, your spouse, your business, your team, your employees, your employer, mm -hmm. communication in life is number one. And even yeah. with Graham, our one-year-old, mm -hmm. I people think I'm nuts, but he goes to like touch something and I'm like, no, sir. <laughs> and I, I treat him like a little adult and he, yeah. it's crazy. He understands and I don't have to, weirdly enough, at least yet he is a boy, right? But I don't <laughs> have to move, you know, nice things in my house. I don't have to right. do these, these things that a lot of parents think maybe they have to do because they don't think they understand. Mm -hmm. um, and every kid is different, right? I'm not telling you how to parent. I'm just saying sure. that. I can appreciate what you're saying. And I think a lot of people can because they understand more than we realize. And with three and a half year old, just creating that normalcy is so right. key and making them understand. Um, mm -hmm. So right. I, I see some people and I just, I have to bring it up because I know people are wondering. Yeah. And I know that the media in general, doesn't matter what side you're on, it's just full of crap. Okay. They're all full <laughs> of crap. They are. Yeah. <laughs> so, but you know, you see user videos. Now we have live live video. We have things that we we maybe wouldn't have known before that are going on now that we can actually see because of people having a smartphone attached to them constantly. So people are asking in the thread, like, what about the riots and everything as a family? Yes. Do you feel safe? Is it is it better than they're saying? Is it worse than they're saying? Can oh. do you or is it like, yeah, you know, we don't really experience that. Right. Well, so it's interesting, you know, the city of Chicago is very big and very broad and I do live in the city. I mean, we live about three miles away from downtown and it's really sad what's been going on here. I, it, my heart breaks because this is not our city. And I feel like our sitting is our city is hurting right now and a lot of pain. And unfortunately, we're using these actions as a way to let out that pain, which we mm -hmm. all know nothing good comes from it. You know, nothing does. And destroying our beautiful city is is not the answer, though. I also understand that, you know, people are frustrated and I respect that, too. So I'm trying to figure out where is the healthy medium for that. So where we live um, is a little bit north of the city. And I will say that when um, the first wave of rioting came in, which I believe was in the beginning of June, end of May, you know, we we were a little scared. I'm not going to lie. We were scared. And we um, it was the first time that my husband ever, you know, locked all the doors. I think we stayed up a little bit at night just to make sure everything was safe. And now it is now it is calm. It is very calm now, I will say. And I hope it lasts. I really, really do. But, you know, the area where we live in, I have not seen a lot of, um, you know, we had we did have some peaceful protesters come, which was great. I, it was a very cool moment to show to my daughter that you could pro peacefully protest. Yeah. But we didn't have a lot of looting, though. We did have some because um, we do have a target in the area. But we also had some businesses that knew that this was going to come and they were prepared. We live down the street from a meat market that's been here since 1948. Best meat you can get anywhere. And they boarded up like the week, as soon as the riot started happening and we're so far north from the city and their, their whole I, you know, idea was, hey, I'd rather be safe than sorry. So they boarded up and closed for a whole week to make sure that nothing happened. But so far, so good. So let's like everybody, good juju, good thoughts that we don't have any more of, you know, these issues, because this just makes me so sad because this is not our city. It's such a proud, beautiful city that I really hope we can. Well, let's get real yeah. for a minute, though. As a mom, that would scare the crap out of me. Yeah. So, you know, yes, it's you, you want to be politically correct. You want to say the right thing. I right. get that. Um, but 
any mom, any dad would be, they'd be scared. So Mm -hmm. as a, and it's great that it's getting better. I'm really glad to hear that. It's it's great that it's getting better. So that's gotta be like, whew, I feel like, yeah, like let's just, everybody who wants to be left alone is like, let's just all love each other and get out of this craziness. Right. Right. But when you have, when you go through something like that, it scares the crap out of you as a parent. So how do you mentally deal with that? Because there's there's women watching right now and men, but I feel like more so women are focused on the kids, men they're like mm-hmm. focused on the family and all that. As a mom, what mentally do you do to get out of that? There are women watching on here that are in the city mm-hmm. that are in different cities around the country that are scared. Absolutely. I will say I did have a lot of moms um, and pe- families that I know, they left the city. They left the city during all that because they didn't want to be they were scared and I don't blame them. And my husband and I, we actually thought about, you know, leaving the city until it, it calmed down. But we also decided that, you know, we're going to stay and we're so far north from where everything was happening. Um, I say it's like three miles and most people are like, oh my gosh, that sounds so close. But when you think about how much stuff is in between three miles, it's actually really far. So we just stayed and we just really, we just said, you know, we're, we're going to stick it out until it gets to the point where we have to leave. And thankfully it did not come up into our neighborhood enough at all. You know, the target got looted by us, which is really sad. Um, and there was a jewelry store that was by us that was looted. And, uh, but nobody came up into our area because we, we live like next to a bunch of houses. There's nothing exciting here, but at one point we did think, what do, what do we do if all of a sudden, you know, something happens and we become a t- like attacked? What do we do? We did feel like we were on the defense and like going to war. So there was a little bit of that like mama bear in me protecting my kids. So I just, you know, I don't know how I muscled through it. I just kept thinking that we're far enough away. We will be okay. But if they come up here, then we will leave. That's really what we, that's really how we, and so on the day to day with working your business and everything that that doesn't even come into your mind. No, it doesn't because it's so far like um, it's not anywhere near me. But that's not to say it couldn't change on a dime, you know, because you just don't you never know what could spark something. You just never know. So I guess I'm always on alert, um, but I feel like I'm at least far enough away where I don't have to worry about it that much. But if it creeps up here, I mean, I think we're heading to like Wisconsin or Indiana or something. I'm going to go camp out, have a little adventure. <laughs> Until everything and then, and then it's just all going on. I mean, did you just not do anything towards your business or what happened there? No. So I kept working my business because I gave myself those three things. I kept working my business because I said, I can get these three things done today. And if for some reason, you know, all hell breaks loose. I give myself grace. I give myself grace, but I still, I still worked it, which I know probably a lot of people are like, huh, how did you do that? Well, if you create things that are manageable and, you know, tangible and easy to do, then you will be, you can accomplish it. But, you know, living in a city, every day changes. I, we also have crazy weather here. We had like a tornado blow through at one point. It was just so crazy. Like everything just changes here and, you know, in a big city in a heartbeat. So, you know, we always have to kind of be on our toes. I guess I'm just used to that as um, a mom and a woman to always be on my toes, ready to go and, you know, pivot and shift whenever I have to be. Love that. And so let's leave everybody with some positive tips around what those things look like. Cause we have some questions around people who are living in the city. They can't like just go out to a Starbucks and start prospecting or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So you mentioned LinkedIn. So yes. what's your last question? What's your process for that um, on LinkedIn for reaching out to people and, and getting them to at least take a look at your business? Sure. So I'll reach out to people in my LinkedIn network and I've just been sending people messages saying, hey, you know, I, you know, I hope you're doing well during, you know, this crazy time we're having right now. You know, I noticed on your profile that you were in real estate and I actually work with a lot of realtors um, and I would love to connect with you just to learn a little bit more about you and your business and share with you a bit of, of mine to see if we can network and help one another out with referrals. 
you know, would you be open to that? And if not, you know, no worries whatsoever. And a lot of people have been responding to that. And I've been really open to hearing more opportunities, especially when it comes to making money. Because if we all learned something in the beginning of March is that, you know, nothing is a guarantee in life, especially with work. And so we need to have multiple streams of income and be very open when it comes to, you know, what's going on and what, you know, be very open to anything. And so I have found that people are a little bit more open. And what mm -hmm. I like about LinkedIn, it's business and it's transactional. So you're in and out. You're only having like 15 minute conversations. You're getting the gist of their business. They're getting the gist of yours. You're seeing where you can help one another and, and you just take it from there. And then I just check in with them every month or I'll refer people and they'll refer people to me. And I have found LinkedIn to really be a gold mine when it comes to making business connections. Love that. And I love that you mentioned referrals because where in the golden rule book does it say that you, you can't give them business or refer them business when you're prospecting? Yes. It, absolutely. It's, it's the law of reciprocity, right? So right. for example, you know, we have, um, we have someone that comes to the house and works with Sabrina around like homework and things like that to get her ready for school because she's a little hyperactive, right? I've shared this before on this Mompreneur Monday. And she's amazing at what she does and she refuses to charge us. And I'm and at this point I'm like, please, what what do you want? You want this painting on the wall? You want this t-shirt? Take things from me. Give, give I want to give you some money. tutoring? Oh yes. my gosh. Because and wow. she um She's amazing. And so it, she is actually one of Ray's, uh, back in high school, Ray had this best friend and she's his sister. So she's like refusing to charge us. I'm like, please take my money. Right. But it's a law of reciprocity, right? Because she's mm -hmm. given so much. Yes. Like if, if you refer business to people on LinkedIn or wherever, they're going to feel like, oh man, I should really maybe do some for this person or at least look at what they've got. So I'm not saying you have to do it that way, but just thinking that way of yeah. value, giving, supporting, maybe even giving shout outs to people that do great things that all comes back to you because they want to reciprocate. So right. I love that. But yeah. Thank you so much, Jen, for being on here. Any last words or, or tips for anybody out there? No, I just have, my only thing is, is that just make sure as moms right now, this is a crazy time. Some kids are not going back to school and, you know, give yourself grace, stick to the three, the three rule, three things a day for your business and for yourself. And, you know, give yourself a lot of grace and just good luck. And I'm here if anybody wants to have questions or if anybody wants to vent, sometimes we need to just vent and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with, you know, letting your frustrations out, but we're all in this together. I am in it with you and, you know, good luck to everybody. Everyone more for you. a little more grace in their lives, right? Yeah, <laughs> now. totally. So appreciate all of these tips are so incredible. I know people are saying, oh my gosh, this helped me so much as a mom. And so I just so appreciate it and you opening up to, to what's going on in your world. So mm -hmm. thank you. And uh, again, for those of you who want to attend virtually, now you can just plan it out, sit at home. You can get a babysitter or not. It's optional for you. Yeah. Uh, Rank Makers Live, you can go to rankmakerslive.com and we have some fun stuff, uh, promotions going on this week for those tickets. So hope you have a great uh, Monday. Thank you again, Jen, everyone. Oh, make sure you, you Jess. Her personally tell her thank you. Let her know how this interview impacted you and how she's making a difference. So have a great Monday and we'll see you on the next. Bye everyone. Thanks. Bye. Jen.